Holy Ghost. Rakatabo Shada. In Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. We declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. I want you to shout the eagles hallelujah now. Hallelujah. Please welcome the person by your right, by your left, and welcome them. Say you're welcome to the, this wonderful conference where eagles will be strengthened, where eagles will be made, where eagles will fly again. Welcome the person by your right, by your left. God bless you as you take your seat. The Lord bless every one of us in Jesus' name. On behalf of the pastorate, we want to welcome every one of us to... The Leadership Conference for Ministers and Workers, year 2024. Uh, let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Theme, the Eagle Minister. And our prayer for every one of us, choir. Our prayer for every one of us is that at the end of this wonderful session, God will give us wings to fly higher in Jesus' name. Now, without wasting further time, we want to start the program with the keynote or welcome address. And to bring this wonderful address to us is no other person than our own daddy in the province, the pastor in charge of the province, the one that God is using for the great things we are seeing in our preacher. With a rising ovation, please help me welcome our daddy, Pastor. Hallelujah. If you are um, clapping for me, I'm a mortar, but the one that has called me is a mortar. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, clap for him, the Almighty God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The way you are clapping, it doesn't show that you are an eagle minister. Eagle minister, come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me and sanctuary, pure and holy, try and true. Father, my Father, I am ready for greatness. Let my greatness begin now. Come on, talk to God. My Father, my Father, I am ready for greatness. Let my greatness begin now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, my Father, my Savior. I don't want to remain in the valley. I want to be on the mountain top. Say, Father, I want to fly. Please carry me now. I don't want to be in the valley. I want to be on the mountain top. Father, I want to fly. Carry me now.
In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, Lord, we thank you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Father, we are here for you this day. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Take over everything. Bless us more today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you are sure you are an eagle minister, come on, shout hallelujah. If you don't understand, maybe they will show us an eagle. You are just standing, you are not flying. And you said, you want to fly, you said, God carry me now. Eagle minister will shout, say hallelujah, you fly. <laughs> Shall we be seated in the Holy Ghost? God bless you in Jesus' name. Even we are tired to say Amen. On behalf of my good self and my beloved wife, Pastor Mrs. Folaki Ulugbemi, the APSCPs and their wives, the CGO and his wife, all the elders and all the pastors, both the Sone area and parish, we are saying you to you, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. I salute the courage and passion of the organizers of this 2024 Igu Ministers Conference. I say thank you, sirs, and thank you, ma'am. Undoubtedly, this year's Ministers Conference is very special, giving its rather unusual team the ego minister, which is to challenge every minister to be like the ego. This indeed is deeply thoughtful at the time like this, when the fine support is quite fundamental for success. Give me the charge, I-14, fission 2032. We surely need the Lord to carry us on eagle's wing to attain the lofty heights emphasized in the vision. Just like he did in times past for the children of Israel. As we can see in the book of Exodus, Exodus 19, verse 4. And I read, ye have seen what I did on the Egyptians, and now I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. If God could liken his mighty everlasting arms to eagles' wings, we can see evidently the wisdom in the theme of this year ministers' conference. Moreover, the Lord expects his children to be like the eagle, possessing his affable characteristics. Eagle ministers, time spent at this conference should be seen as a time of waiting that is bound to profit everyone greatly because that is the promise of God in this world. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and shall not be weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. May Lord bless the leading and the hearers of his word in the name of Jesus. The topics of discussion at this conference have been choosing carefully with the aim of encouraging the development of some of the outstanding qualities and characteristics of the ego in the children of God who are particularly ministers 
in the redeemed Christian church of God, this special God's end time church. There's really much to learn from the eagle with respect to his strength, his speed, uh, speed fission, boldness, and wisdom in confronting and swearing over storms. It is discipline and how it trains its eagles to fly and start to hunt, hunt or feed for themselves. The attitude and worshipfulness of an eagle is dealing with his key enemy, the serpent. It's also a great lesson for minister of the gospel of Christ. It is necessary for ministers to be eagle-eyed according to 1 Peter 5.8 which says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may defy. May he not defy us in the name of Jesus. We must be men and women of clear vision which is the reason why every diligent, industrious, assiduous, dedicated, meticulous, hardworking, and pacifying ministers must buy into Fission 2032 and make it a personal fission at this or a respective level with the church organization. Beloved ego ministers, don't let me preempt the very rich discussions and interactions that will zoo at this conference. I have no doubt that anyone that, that attend this conference this year with an open mouth will surely be thanking God for the opportunity, especially because of the highly endured resource persons and netted workers and netted speakers who are the facilitators. Please propose in your heart that you are going to derive maximum impartation from this conference. On this note, I say a very happy welcome to you all attending this Equal Ministers Conference 2024 and pray that you have a very fruitful, fruitful, rewarding time at this conference. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Let's celebrate Jesus in the life of our Father and the Lord. Is that the best you can do, Hegel believers? Hegel ministers and workers, let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy, for that wonderful opening speech. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Like you heard that he said, one of the characteristics of the ego is in its ability to focus. So please tell your neighbor this morning and for the rest of the day, focus. Hallelujah. As we continue in this program, we'll be having a plenary one. The team is overcoming barriers. To take the session is that one of our daddies the CGO, as a church growth officer of Lagos Province 3. Please help me welcome with rounding ovation, Pastor Chuka Chiazo. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Please sit down. I want to appreciate our Father and the Lord first and foremost, and all the ministers and the organizing committee for sorting my name to be one of the resource persons this morning. I want to pray that the way you sought me out, God will sort you out too. In the midst of your equals, 
you will be sorted out in the name of Jesus. While standing on the existing protocol, may I ask you all to rise on your feet. Shall we rise on our feet? We give you glory, Lord, as we your majesty. We worship you because you are the king of kings and the lord of lords. You are the ancient of days that never change. You are ageless in nature. And so you want us to be like you as an ego. You as the modern ego have desired us to be like you entirely. This morning, Lord, I commit the word into your hand. I commit myself into your hand. I commit this crowd into your hand. Father, please let your word touch all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. We don't want the word to just pass across us. Or we passing through the word. But we want the word to cut across our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Once again, I want to say thank you, sir, for this opportunity. As we go into the topic I was asked to handle, it's called overcoming barriers. Overcoming barriers. Our general text for the program is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. A few minutes ago, it was highlighted to all of us. But as I begin, I'd like us to look at Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. And he said, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Can James Version say, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Psalm 37, verse 1. Psalm 37, verse 1. I'm just taking that verse 1. So it says, Fritz not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of who? Of iniquity. Praise the Lord. What is the Bible talking about when it said in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31? Concerning eagles, that we will mount up with the wings of ego, we will fly and will never be tired, we will run, we will never be weak. I pray this very morning that as the word comes, your life will be open to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are introduced as eagle ministers. What is the reason why the Lord wants us to be as eagles? There are some various, or rather there are some peculiarities that are known for ego. Our daddy highlighted a few, just a few minutes ago. But let's just run through them. One, the ego bed is a special 
breed among birds. Can I ask you a question? Are you a common person? Answer me. Then if you are going, if you are the eaglet, you must see yourself as going to be like the mother eagle in due time. With a particular or a peculiar characteristic that makes sub, that makes eagle very significant and different among birds. This character is that eagles they fly in with a balanced gravity in storms and dangerous, dangerous uh, winds. Eagles are never afraid of storms, no matter the strength of the storm. The torrent up, the torrent down. The eagle will balance a bit. Eagles are special because of their strength. For this strength, they symbolize war. Sorry, they symbolize war snappers. Empirical power. This was noted, beloved brethren, far back during the Babylonian war, when it was a little impossible and they realized, focusing and seeing how the eagle focused, their snipers began to pick men at strategic points down one after the other to break barriers. You will be a barrier breaker in the name of Jesus Christ. Eagles are conscious of security. Hence, anywhere they are, they are focused. They see very far away. They build their nests at the high cliffs where other animals cannot. Eagles are not polygamous, but eagles are monogamous. Meeting only a partner in life or true. That's exactly what the Lord wants us to be on earth. One man, one wife. Not one man, one wife, ten mistress. You will not be among them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then, what are barriers? I will describe barriers in two ways. Number one, let me start by saying that barriers are in nature of obstacles, storms, mountains, fences that prevent or stop anyone from movement or gaining access into a, a successful end. It could also be referred as circumstance that prevents people from making progress. Barriers can be spiritual or physical. They can be psychological. They could be emotional. They could be cultural. They could be gender, technology, communication, even language. Rules and regulation or policies or restrictions. For example, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, Nebuchadnezzar built an, uh, an evil royal status and wants every citizen, including their slaves, to worship. But there, Daniel showed that he is an ego child. You will be an ego child forever in Jesus' name. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 1 to 13, Absalom, the son of David, became an impostor, stopping people from reaching David, his father, as the king. And at a time, woe all the men and the women and the youths to his own side against his father. Those are part of the barriers. Walls, like Jericho walls, is one of the barriers that we have often read about. So, barriers are like walls, barricades, bars, or objects, or fortified situations that makes, that makes uh, situations more impossible for any penetration or any, any achievement to come true. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 to 16. The Red Sea stopped the children of Israel for a moment from crossing to Canaan land. We thank God for his divine intervention. And that is one of the reasons why we are here this morning. That whatever barrier has been facing us, by his grace we will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Another spiritual aspect of it is self-inflicted barriers. For instance, Achan, one of the Israelites, in Joshua chapter 7, verse 6 to 20, stole 
and caused I to defeat, to defeat uh, 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 the children of Israel. What does overcome mean? It means to prevail, to subdue, to be victorious, to succeed in dealing with problems or difficulties, to bring under control, to conquer or to overcome. In this short note, I want to ask you once again, how do, do you think we can overcome if any of these cases confront us today? Can I have your answer? Do you think we can overcome? Why do you think we can overcome? I have the answer as I follow you in your ears. In Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Bring us back there. Audiovisual. It says, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. We are more than overcomers. We are just what you think we are not because the, uh, who is with us is greater than who is in the world that stands as a, a barrier. Praise the Lord, somebody. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, having spoiled the principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them. Who was that? That is our master, Jesus Christ, our first forerunner. The only man we have right to imitate in every situation, that is him. Praise the Lord. Looking back to what barriers are, may I remind you, in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheers, I have overcome the world. Is it true of us? It's true. Jesus has overcome, we shall overcome. No matter their strength, no matter their power, no matter their fortification, we will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 19, verse 30, the Bible says, it, it, Jesus said, it is finished. What is finished? The sin barrier, the unseen barrier, the human created barriers are all what? Finished. So give yourself an applause and say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me victory in advance. I'm not hearing you. For giving me victory in advance. What are the keys we can use to overcome barriers or obstacles? Number one, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and verse 6 tells us that faith is the key that is against every situation that is not of God. Praise the Lord. What can we do with faith? I want to bring out three things from there. Number one, a faith has the eyes of an ego. He sees what the human eyes cannot see. That is why it is called faith. He sees the victory standing when you persist, when you stand strong, when you stand firm. He, uh, victory is waiting for you at the other side. Praise the Lord. Praise the, the Lord. Number two about faith is that faith has the power to carry you through obstacles without looking back. How does that happen? In the midst of obstacles, you have hope and you have belief that you will get there. Will you get there indeed? I know I will get there. What about you? No matter what the obstacle is in Nigeria today, I will get there. I will be what I want to be in all stands in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, our attitude to barrier. We often develop the attitude of, of uh, fear. Attitude of fear. But listen to me. The eagles rejoices when, when uh, evil wind comes against them. When storms come, you see evil balance spread its wing and that torrent up there carries the ego to the next level. You, that every trial, every obstacle that is facing you right now will be your standing stone to get across to the other side in the name of Jesus. Number three. Is examination of self by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. He said, Examine yourself or know you not yourself. Examine yourself. I, do you, are you still who you are when you first began? Are you still standing on that solid rock? Are you there on that stable land that you saw and you say, Oh, this is just the end of all things. I will march forward. If you are marching backwards, I pray that this very morning, those barriers you are seeing will be taken away from you. 
Number four, faith shows you action to take and never puts your back, back down. How does that happen? I have my testimony in the book of First Samuel, chapter 30, verse 6 to 8, where David was faced with a great challenge. Invaders had come to invade his community. And I've taken his wife and the, the entire community was robbed up. They were taken captive. But the Bible said that at the time David appeared there, oh my, oh my, oh. he cried, he was weak. But listen to me, faith will never make you become pitiful because it doesn't want you to become a pit. What happens to pits? People keep throwing waste into it. Your life will never be a pit. So you will never go down to the level of becoming a pit. Praise the Lord, somebody. David never pitied himself. He saw God doing something. What was the next thing he did? He requested to know how he can go about the situation. Did he go or not? God gave him the roadmap. Psalm 119105. The Bible said that the word of God is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. It will lighten up your mind, lighten up your spirit, lighten up your intent. As you move, he will get you across there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I met somebody early in 1990. He gave birth, and after giving birth uh, at the time, whether she's breastfeeding or not, her breast will be running water. And he met the doctor and said, Doctor, look at, look at. Ah, doctor said, This is cancer. He said, What? Cancer, you mean? He said, Yes. He said, Well, great problem, great answer. Oh, God. Today, the person is alive and healthy. Where is cancer? Where is the cancer? The cancer disappeared. Because there was a force by faith matching the force of the, of the human belief. Praise the Lord, somebody. Your language matters so much. And I know that with your language, you can overcome. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, do not overweigh your obstacles above the word of God. But rather, set an equation. Rather set an equation. God, what do you say about this? Give me the answer. This is the situation I'm in. And if he answers you, what will you do? You can do just what he wants you to do. Your action point. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 and 17 tells us that God said, is there anything too hard for me to do? Verse 17 says, ah God, nothing is too hard for you to do. Is there anything actually too hard for God to do for us? Is there anything too hard for God to do for us? Or there is nothing too hard for God to do for us. Because he can open the door and let you go free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 declares that at the same time. He said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Look at the person that took faith to overcome a deadly and dangerous situation of life. Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 25 to 35. That was a lady of 12 years issue of blood. If we take sickness as one obstacle, if you read that passage very well, at the time, the woman came to a point that she was homeless and helpless. But there is help coming from above. There is help from coming from above. When her faith was restored, all she said that, I heard that the Messiah is coming. If I may but touch the hem of his hair, garment, I shall be made whole. Did he do it or not? She did it. And what happened to her? She overcame. She became a triumphant woman. You'll be triumphant in life in the name of Jesus. When God's word meets the word of the devil, the evil suggestive words, what do you think will happen? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 to 10, Jesus Christ, our master, resisted, which stood, stood on the platform of the stable land, stood as the rock of ages, saw himself facing the dangers, but he had the word of God in his mouth. And the last time he said, Satan, get behind me. The cup that he said for me to drink, I will surely drink it. If he hadn't drank that cup, standing firm on his ground, you and I will never be saved today. Praise the Lord, somebody. You will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I go further. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 14 to 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. 
The Bible said I will have a high priest who cannot leave us wallowing in pains and sorrow except we fail to call his name. And he said this about high priest. Who is that high priest? Jesus Christ. Let's read it together. Can we go? Please read this from the screen. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passing into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Verse 15, for we have not a high priest. We cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted like us. We are yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. There is a time for need. And there is a time you must go to that throne of grace. Not minding how the situation, how the weather is, it doesn't matter. If you do not overweigh the star circumstance more than the situation you are involved, God will see you through in the name of Jesus Christ. They say Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. Verse 13 is a very charming but let's read verse 12 first. Verse 12 first. He said, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it's a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Give me verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight, but all things are naked and open. Unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Who do we have to do with? Jesus Christ. Nothing is hidden from him. That obstacle you think is about to swallow you. Listen to me. It cannot swallow you. If Red Sea could only be a temporary thing to the children of Israel, but an enemy to the Egyptians, listen attentively, you will get to the Red Sea, the bridge will be prepared for you. When you just make up your mind to set your feet on the, on the bridge, you will get to where you are going to. Praise the Lord somebody. You need to be very courageous. When you are facing obstacles, it doesn't matter the nature, like I enumerated to you. It doesn't matter the nature. Why I say it doesn't matter the nature is because Psalm 119 verse 89 tells me that everything concerning you has been settled through the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 89, it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Where? In heaven. It's the heaven that controls the earth. Whether you like it or not. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. In that Exodus chapter 14 verse 15 to 16, that obstacle was there. Moses, as hasty he used to be, as vocal as he used to be, that moment, what did he do? He cried. Listen attentively. Your crying makes little or no difference except you know what to do after that cry. When you cry, when you groan in the spirit and turn to the Lord, like Hezekiah did. Hezekiah cried, but yet he took the letter of, this, of, of, of Sennacherib and faced the wall, lay it at the altar, and, and told God everything. And God responded, I said, the way he came, he will go back there. I will put my, my hook in his nose and will drag him back there. That's in Isaiah chapter 37. If you read Isaiah chapter 38, verse 14, he cried back. He said, God undertake for me. Who is he undertaking for? Is it Ezekiah only? No. For the city of, of Israel. He said, God undertake for us. Because he realized that the only strength he has is with the God. The Lord will manifest himself and the glory will come in Jesus' name. Another example I want to give you here is a man called David. Again, he met an obstacle in in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 45 to 47, the demonic Goliath came, tormented Israel for almost 40 days. And at this time, there was no, there was no way out. Israel had already felt they were gone. But there is always a Messiah. Jesus, our Messiah, will always show up with you. At every difficult situation, at every difficult moment, and he said to Goliath, you come to me with stones and stones and the swords, 
I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That introduces me back to you that we have the Lord of hosts as a name to overcome every obstacle. It doesn't matter how tough it is. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is strong enough to protect you. How do I testify about that? Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 tells us clean and clear that he has been given a name above all names on earth. At that mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. I give you an example. In 2017, I was in Oron. Those of you who fellowship, I think I've given the testimony here. We got to a place in the high sea where the two waters meet, the unclean water and the clean water. And uh, our boat gave up the engine. And it took us 25 minutes back. The air was just taking or driving us on its own. I look up to God. The missionaries with me were all crying. Ah, Pastor, you didn't tell us this is how it is when you travel. Why is it? I said, well, everything is in the hands of God. One thing I know is that God has never told me that the high sea is going to be my graveyard. That people said bye-bye to me, I will get back to them. And beloved brethren, what happened next? After 25 solid minutes, I don't say, God, please help us. I know I've been praying, but I have to open my mouth wide now. Please help us. And I said to the captain, start the engine again. As I was saying it, a little water splashed into my hand and I wiped my, my face. I removed my glasses, I wiped my face. Start that engine. It started the engine. The engine didn't start. The second time, it didn't start. The third time the engine starts, I said, let us go. The Lord, brethren, there is a zonal headquarters there today across the river. Praise the Lord, somebody. When you confront the, the, the difficult situation with the name of the Lord of hosts, he will come into the battle with you. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. What did he say? Psalm 24, please. Audio visual, you are gone. Oh, my God. Okay, Psalm 27, verse 7 to 10. He said, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be that lifted up, you everlasting doors. For the king of glory to do what? Shall come in. And he said, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Verse 9, he said, lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Shall come in. Verse 10. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. He will see you through. He's always beside you. He will go with you. He will carry you through in the name of Jesus Christ. When we talk about this, but we talk about the strong tower in Psalm 18 verse 10 and 2. Give us Psalm 18 verse 2 first and foremost. Psalm 18 verse 2. Psalm 18 verse 2. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, my strength, with whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation. Oh my God, if this is your God, why then will you see obstacle and fruit before obstacle? Psalm 37 verse 1. It's a fruit down not because of these evil things that are springing up. Some are man-made because there is a refuge with us. Verse 10 of that chapter says that <clears throat> the rod upon the the rod upon the cherub did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Do you think he cannot carry you upon that wind? He will carry you. Hallelujah, somebody. He will carry you. He will carry you. You cannot see the wind. But if he decides to carry you like he carried Elijah, he will not make any mistake to land you anywhere he wants to land you. He decides to carry you like he carried Philip, he will not make any mistake to land you before the eunuch or the president or the king of the nation, provided you are in his will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because he's our refuge, we shouldn't free it anyhow. We have the blood of Jesus. Sorry, before I go to the blood of Jesus, just a few weeks ago, we ended up with the word, or with our team here, his word is here and amen. His word is here and what? 
I want to give you a testimony of that. On the 18th of that month, I didn't have a single 10 naira for tithes. And I said, God, today is 18th. And I, I don't have money for tithes this month. <laughs> My usual other tithes have been taken directly from the mission. So how can I go and face you when others are giving tithes? And the Lord, brethren, to the glory of God. In less than a week, I had enough tithes. And I glorified the name of the Lord. I glorified the name of the Lord. His word is yes and amen. He can never deny himself. He can never deny his word. These two things are in complement to each other. They complement each other to the point that as this one is going, the other one is following him. The name and the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has so much power. Number one, the blood of Jesus gives us peace. Colossians 1.20 Are you afraid of this circumstance? Plead the blood of Jesus against that circumstance. It gives us peace. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. Our redemption, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Part, is part of our redemption. In fact, that is the, the door that opened our redemption. The coverage and safety, Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 to 14. Victory by his blood, Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Praise the Lord. Ah, as I begin to do some conclusions here. Beloved brethren, whatever the obstacle is, I want you to realize that when every other thing fails, praise and worship cannot fail. Thanksgiving cannot fail. If that is the only thing you have at last, you have reached somewhere. Finally, if there is any other thing that you may have to recognize, recognize the power of God in your life journey as a Christian. No matter how it is. I showed you John chapter 16 verse 33 a few minutes ago. Because his word is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two eight sword. He knows everything that concerns you. And will carry you through in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. He says, I will be with you to the end. Do you think that obstacle is going to be your end? Do you think that challenge is going to be your end? Is that's going to be your stepping stone? And the Lord will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, you are never alone as a child of God. When you align yourself with the word of God and follow his commandment, you will indeed become that which is profitable to your very self and to yourself. Psalm 37 verse 4 and 5. I will read that together. Psalm 37, Psalm 37 verse 4 and 5. And he says, verse 37, he said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Verse 5, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Rise on your feet. We will overcome. We have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the word of God. We will overcome by them in the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved brethren, the first and foremost thing I'd like us to do in these few minutes is, number one, I want you to close your eyes and examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Are you that minister? Are you that worker that cried and said, oh God, I didn't know this. It's like this. I, I, what have I been doing in the world? Now you are inside. You are weak. I want you to examine yourself. Examine yourself. Then turn back to the Lord. Cry to him. If there is anything that's already causing a barrier in your life, tell the Lord, please take it away from me. I want to be an overcomer. 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 Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Don't be ashamed to ask the Lord to help you. Don't be ashamed to ask the Lord to help you. Don't be ashamed. That is why you are his. Except you have elsewhere to go to. Except you have elsewhere you run to in the night. When others are asleep. When others are snoring. You are somewhere else. That is the only time you can be ashamed to say, Ah, the I can't, this one, this one for what now? I beg, let it go. It cannot go like that. Just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Number two prayers. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. 
Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Three of them are combined in these prayers. You are going to lift up your hands. You are going to lift up your right hands before the Almighty God. Your right hands, please. Your right hands, please. You will say, Father, I am your image. Totally committed unto your, unto your figure. At this moment, oh Lord, I lift up my hands before you. Take this hand for exploits. It's part of my life. Use me for exploits. In this period where things are very hard in this nation. He gave you power. He gave you authority. He gave you anointing. And he said, behold, I give unto you power to trade upon serpents and scorpions. You are fully figured in Christ, in him, to do exploits. Because he said, I go by where, what I left behind. You must continue. You must continue, John chapter 14, verse 12. You will do that exploits. You will do that exploits. He said, you will lay your hand on the sick and ye shall be healed. The sick shall be healed. The sick shall be delivered. Sickness is an obstacle. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, for you as an individual, your two hands on your chest. Your two hands on your chest. Your two hands on your chest. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22 calls him the balm of Gilead. Exodus chapter 15 calls him Jehovah Rapha. What does these two names stand for? Mark chapter 10, exactly 46 to 52, a man heard that the balm of Gilead is passing. He said, whether I see him or not, he will hear me. I will go to him. This barrier is over. And he began to shout. And he began, an individual, he began to shout. Look at the crowd here. I want you to single out yourself. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. Say, Father, whatever my circumstance is now, I need a solution to it. I need a solution to it. To every barrier and our obstacles rising and standing against me now. Oh, rock of ages, rock of ages, rock of ages, rock of ages. Hear the cries of your people. Hear the cries of your children. Hear the cries of your minister. Hear the cries of your minister. Hear the cries of your workers. Hear the cries of your pastors. Rock of ages, hear, 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 and respond to them. You heard that young man. You say, you say, stop. I heard my name. I heard the son of David. I heard have mercy. Have mercy. Go and call him. They gave they called him. And that was it. Thank you, Father. Business barrier. Business barrier. Marriage barrier. Barrenness. Poverty, every one of them, we have them all. Peter only said, at thy word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. All eyes closed. All eyes closed, please. Please, all eyes closed. If by chance or circumstance you have taken 10 feet backwards, have come down from the ladder, and you are not seeing the ladder of salvation very far away, this is your opportunity. Just 14 seconds, 13 seconds, just wave your hand. I just want to pray with you. Just wave your hand wherever you are. Don't be ashamed, please. Here, today, we are going to receive loads of God's word to help. Can I see your hand? Glory be to God. Father, I lift up these your children before you. Whatever barrier that have made them to step down from the altar of salvation to human degradation again. Oh Lord, release your word. Please bring them back home and leave them up from that dungeon. 
give them up to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are clapping for Jesus, you can do better. Hallelujah. Barrier-breaking ego ministers, shout hallelujah. Please let's stretch forth our hands to our pastor, the National Church Good Officer. Let's speak words into his life that he will continue to increase in strength, in wisdom. This will be the least message, revelational message we'll hear from him. He will keep climbing from glory to glory. Thank you, Father, because you do so. And in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One more time, barrier breaking ego minister. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can have your seat in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Brethren, please, we have a quick announcement to make. Please, if you are the owner of Toyota Corolla, gray color, registration number AGL15CU. Registration number AGL15CU. Toyota Corolla, gray color. And also Toyota Islander, black Toyota Islander, with registration number AAA470CV. Please. Help us go and repark. You are blocking some people that have come for a program since about 7 a.m. and they have to go for the reception of that wedding. Please take notes. Black Toyota Islander AAA 470CV and Gray Toyota Corolla AGL 15CU. Please help us go and repark. And also, I was asked to remind us that there's a car sticker being sold by the ushers for 1,000 naira. If you're interested, please speak with the ushers. Praise the Lord. Right now, I want to go into the atmosphere of praise as we invite the Lagos Province Three Mass Choir to give us their special number. Please give it up for Jesus as they give us their number. Hallelujah. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are there grateful people in the house? Somebody lift up your hands to us and say, I am grateful. Grateful. Say, I am, grateful. I am grateful. Say, my gratitude will never cease. My gratitude. Say it like you mean it. Say, my gratitude will never cease. My gratitude will never cease. My own gratitude will never cease. Will you see?
your feet and give the Lord a wave offering. Are you grateful? Are there no grateful people in this church? Are there no grateful people here? See how we from his brother. See how far. From January to February to March. Now we are in April. Tell him thank you. If that's all you say, is enough. If that's all you say, say thank you, Jesus. We are grateful, Jesus. Hallelujah. Administrations. Um, we're moving to the next plenary session, the second we have for today. And the theme is, or the title is, The Royal Minister. Anchoring this is a very sound Bible teacher, is the assistant pastor in charge of province admin. Can we give it up to Jesus, Pastor Steve Osafile? Welcome to Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep clapping for Jesus. You're not clapping for man, but for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shall we pray? Immortal and invisible God, want to thank you. Holy God, we adore you. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the first session. We thank you for this session. Holy Spirit, we ask that you take control. In the name of Jesus. I ask that the purpose of this particular session will be made real in our lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, once again, we can do nothing without you. Empower me as I share your word with your people. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Quiet time, you can go. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Now, before you see that, I want to pray. Say, Father. Say, Father. Grant me the grace to receive your word into my life. Yes, talk to God. Ask God to grant you the grace. Ask God to grant you the grace to receive his word into your life. The word can come and the word may fly out. The word may not sink in. And then the word will not benefit you. Pray that the word of God will benefit you. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's be seated. I want to thank my oh God, our Father and the Lord. We want to appreciate you really good. Thank you, sir, for this very, very uh, privilege. For this privilege we have to minister this auspicious uh, leadership conference for Lagos Province 3. I thank you, all my colleagues, and I thank you also. Put your hands together for Jesus. Okay. I'll be giving a topic, the royal minister. The royal minister. Or if you want me to call it like African man, the royal minister. The royal minister. Um, I'll take my test from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. However, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. Says, but ye are a chosen generation, a real priesthood, and holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show for the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But our focus, my focus this minute, 
is the world royal. So I'm living out the world priesthood. The world royal. Because I've been asked to speak on the royal minister. Now Christians are special people. We're not just ordinary people. If you look at the word royal, royal does not signify another person. Why are we special people? Why are Christians not ordinary people? And of course, while I'm talking about Christians, I'm talking about our sins. And permit me to use the word workers as a generic term today. Because we have a royal identity. We have a royal identity. We are royalty. We are royal members of the family of God. The king of kings and the lord of lords. The God we serve is the king of kings. In other words, being his children, we also are kings and queens. The child of a lion, like they say, is a lion. So I want to understand our special status in Christendom. Some of us may not pay attention to the status that Christ has conferred upon us. And most of the time we dwell on the priesthood aspect of it. Now how do we become royal, uh, how do we acquire a royal entity or royal status. Number one, by salvation. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, in John chapter 1 verse number 12, that as many as received him, that as many that, that received Christ, to them he gave power that they become the sons of God. To become the daughters of God. To them that believe on his name. And so the child of a king is also is a, is a potential king. Is a king. So that's number one. Number two, how did we acquire our royal status? By adoption. By adoption. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 5. It says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And the Bible also confirms this in Romans chapter number 8, verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15, the Bible says that we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have been adopted into the family of God, into the kingship that God represents. Of course, how did we become a royal royalty? Number three, as heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says. That if we are children of God. If the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12. That we have become the sons and daughters of God. We have become the children of God. Then the Bible says here. That we are heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. Heirs first. Before John Tears. And of course, God Himself, Jesus Christ Himself, made it clear in Revelation chapter 1, verse number 6. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says that He had made us kings. Did you see it? Jesus Christ had made us kings. So when you come into the kingdom of God, when we became born again, we didn't come in as ordinary people. We came into the kingdom of God as kings. Say, I'm a king. Say, I'm a queen. I can't hear you. So, that is it. And of course, Revelation chapter 5, verse 
We're not going there. Now, when we become kings and queens, automatically, we also are entitled to all the rights and privileges of Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus Christ is entitled to as the son of God. The Bible says also that we as co heirs with Jesus Christ, we are also entitled to all of them. We are partakers of God's inheritance with Jesus Christ. Now I want to look at the duties of a king. The duties of a king. So that we will be able to see what God is expecting of us as his royal beings or as, uh, as members of his family, as royal entities, as royalty. Number one, a king exercises dominion over his kingdom and subjects. Without the kingdom, there will be no king. A king has a territory. He has a domain over which he exercises authority. And the king is bold and fears nobody in his domain. You know where I came from? Before a king is installed, matter your age, they will say, they will take you out to do what? To cook you, to equip you with power. And so when the king comes to assume the duty, he becomes, he becomes fearless. Now you must understand as royal members of the family of God, God expects us to exercise dominion wherever we are. God expects us to exercise dominion of our enemy. God expects us to exercise dominion of our demons, of our situations and circumstances. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. In Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power and authority to tread upon Satan, to us scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And he says what? What did he say? That is dominion. Personal. The apostles of Jesus Christ, when they sent them out, they had dominion. Over Satan's, Satan's cohorts. And they came back to Jesus Christ rejoicing. And Jesus Christ said to them, do not rejoice in this, but rejoice that your name, the names are written in the books of life. Brethren, I want to ask you a question. Now, as a worker, I've told you, you're not just ordinary in the sight of God. He sees you as a king. How are you exercising dominion? Or let me put it differently. Are you exercising dominion as workers? I dare no workers that when people come to them for prayers, they refer to them to some place. Or they refer them to some place. Then you are failing to perform your role as a king. A king has exercising dominion over everything. In the Old Testament, before a king assumed duty, he must be anointed by God. Paul, okay, Saul, rather, Saul, was anointed by God in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. David was anointed by God three times. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. And then 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. And then 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3. Even our Lord Jesus Christ himself, God anointed with the power and the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good. Jesus Christ needed the anointing of God to exercise dominion. In other words, 
What are we saying? As royal members of the family of God, we also must be equipped with the power and the ability of the Holy Ghost to function as his representative on earth. There can be no dominion of the power. You can't decide the dominion of the power. And that is why some of us, over 70% of us, I'm sure, if they bring some demon possessor and say, come and pray. He said, I'm not a deliverance minister. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a deliverance minister. But the Bible says, you are a king. And Jesus says, you are to exercise to be I give you power. Now, recently I read one paramount ruler in the southwest. Because of the event that happened in the state where two kings were killed recently. And he was telling his fellow kings or bars, look, go and acquire power. And if you don't want to acquire power, leave the institution. And I'm always telling you first and foremost, this institution is traditional. So as a king, you need to walk in power. Number two, duty of a king. The king is a warrior. The king has a warrior. In the Old Testament, kings were military leaders who led their armies to battle. They were military leaders. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says that there was a time that kings used to go fought to battle. There was a time that kings and of course, it was in one of those times that David tarried at home and he fell to sin. In 1 Samuel chapter 31, 1 Samuel 31, read from verse 1 to 13, talk about Saul and Jonathan's death in battle. Saul led the battle. And of course, unfortunately, they died. As royal members of the kingdom of God, we have been called to battle. We have been called to engage in spiritual warfare against the kingdom enemies or against the enemies of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says in Matthew 11 verse 12, say from the days of John the Baptist until now, what happens? The kingdom of heaven Suffering violence and the violent take it by force. We'll be kidding ourselves if we say we are in the kingdom of God and we're not ready to engage in spiritual battles. We are commissioned to battle. As a king, that is one of the duties of a king in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. God, but Paul was talking to say, as you know, soldiers of Christ, endure hardness. Endure hardness. We are soldiers. Number three, duty of a king. A king protects his domain and his subjects. A king protects his domain and subjects. In the Old Testament, the kings of Israel defended. Her against her enemies. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 20. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 20. The Bible was talking about say, the expectations of the people of God before God gave them soul. He said, We also, like all the nations around us, that our king may judge us, not just judging us, but we go out before us. And fight our battles. King fight battles. As spiritual kings, as kings and queens of God, God expects us to fight battles against the hosts of darkness that have been amassed against his kingdom. We are to protect the kingdom of God and their subjects. The kingdom of God are to be protected by us. Unfortunately, many of us align 
with the enemies of the kingdom to fight against it. We talk ill of the kingdom. We talk ill of our leaders. We do so many things to work against the progress of the kingdom. But Jesus said in Mark chapter 3 verse 24, Jesus said, a kingdom divided. Again, he said, we do what? The fall. So you must understand that what God expects you to do as his royal, as his royalty is for you to take up weapon to defend the kingdom that you're in. Number four, duty of a king. A king carries himself with dignity. Everybody say dignity. Wherever you see a king, he comports himself in such a way, a manner of attracting honor and respect from all and sundry. That's the king. If a king were to be here, maybe among those in front, I wouldn't need Pastor Oshin or Pastor Benga to tell me or to tell us that this is a king. Because by his robe, by his way of dressing, Everybody know that this is a king. By his comportment, his carriage, his dressing. Today, many of us, many Christians have copied worldly dressing. We are done so much that we are even at competing the world in their dressing. We have two set of dresses. One who dress to church, and the way you're going to work, where you're going to function, social function, is another one. But you see, if a king should dress that way, he loses his respect. So you must ask yourself as a king, how am I dressing? Am I dressing to attract honor, to attract respect from people? I'm trotting, I'm dressed in such a manner that they would look at me with disdain. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. The Bible says, Love not the world. But today, the kings, the Christian kings, have loved the world. And there's no separation. You can't differentiate between who is a Christian and who is not a Christian. Number four, five. Five things about a, a, king. a king. A king has character good character. A king has integrity, honesty. A king is supposed to be trustworthy and straightforward. A man of truth. A king is supposed to be somebody who lives by example. When he says I, when he says something, he stands by it, and that is what he does. Not like a Pharisee that will say one thing and will do another thing. His word is his bond. What are people saying about you as kings and queens in the kingdom of God? Can somebody say, Yes, I know him, I know her. If it tells you something, that is it. It is settled. You can bank on him. Because he's a man of his word. Oh, you, hey, there's a that my heart. If you believe him, you're finished. You will regret it. You are caught in trouble for sin. That shows lack of integrity. Lack of character. Today, the church is devoid of people with character, with honesty. And you don't know who you are. A king. And the word is seeing you. You are reading you. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. It says, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. Or whatever is more than that is evil. It's sin. But for some of us, our communication is yea and nay. 
nay, and yes. So you don't know who you're trying to believe. So you must understand that you're not just ordinary. Number six, a king is knowledgeable. In the Old Testament, kings and leaders had adequate, adequate knowledge of the law of God. They were custodians of the law of God. And that was why in 1 Kings chapter 2, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, you know, when David was about to die, he called his son, his heir, and said, come, I'm about to die. And he, and he gave him charge, he said, keep charge of the Lord, that God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandment, and his judgment, and his testimonies, as it is written, in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whatsoever thou turnest thyself. He said, now you're going to be king. You must be someone that is knowledgeable about your God, about his laws. Can we say that of us today? How much information do we have about the God we serve? How much information do we have about the enemy we are fighting? You can read the Trilomy 17, verse 18 to 19. The Trilomy 17, was it 18 to 19? Many of us who have been in the kingdom of God for several years, Yet, we are remain babes. Let you wonder the enemy is taking advantage of us. And some of us are moving from one spiritual house to another. Why? Because they lack knowledge. For the kingdom which they belong. The kingdom which they are kings and queens. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The Bible says something. They say, they say, woe to the land when their king is a child. Child is not about how long you have been in Christendom. It's about your growth. How are you growing? What is your knowledge about God? Number seven, obedience. Obedience. In the Old Testament, obedience by the king was paramount. Kings were up to uphold the law of God. If you read that, the Trinity 17, verse 18 to 20, they were to uphold the law of God. How many of us are walking in true obedience? Our daddy said what was given his Opening remark that obedience is what holiness is contaminous with holiness. Paul, the first king, fell. Paul fell because of disobedience. You can read his own account. First Samuel chapter 15, from verse 10 to 11, 23 to 24. That was why God, Moses told Joshua, said, Joshua, look. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. If you are going to succeed as my successor, then this book of the law, you must know it and you must obey it. You must keep it. Obedience is lacking in the lives of many workers today. By Jesus, our joint hair exemplified obedience. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11, even though it was equal with God, but he never thought it robbery. So he humbled himself. He obeyed everything God said. Everything that God said. He had a mind to do the will of God. What did God say? That was all. Not my will, but his will be done. 
But today, we are doing our will. A king cannot just do his own will. Even in the, on the earth, even in Nigeria, as kings, you can't do your own will. Because there's somebody who appointed you. Okay, let's go to the next one. Loyalty. Loyalty. A king's interest is that of promoting his kingdom and his subjects. And of course, the one who appointed him. For us as kings in this, in this kingdom of God, our loyalty should be first to God and his kingdom. I should superintend. That's just, uh, you know, override every other loyalty above ours. But today, the truth is that our loyalty takes, you know, precedence before that of God. We are loyal to ourselves and not to God. We put our interests before the interests of God. But a king puts the interest of his kingdom, his subjects, before his own, his own interest. And that is why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? So, and if you go through the present verses, Jesus Christ knew that people had need. He knew people had interest. But he said, no, don't make your own need your priority. Your priority should be that of God who has called you into his kingdom. And I said, all those things you are looking for, they will follow naturally. There are extra. But today, the reverse is the case. It's our only trust, our business. Let's go to the next one. Righteousness and justice. A king epitomizes righteousness and justice. It's to rule in righteousness and in the fear of God. You are a king, but I want to ask you how much attention do you pay to righteousness in your life? At times we do. At times we do. But especially in the, in the secret, we will be proud if people get to know in the open. Most wicked and pernicious acts are committed today by those who call themselves Christians. We will call ourselves Christians. Some of the things that unbelievers 